Good afternoon, everybody. We're so glad you could make it today. My name is Marisa Redanti. I'm the program's outreach coordinator at the Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment. And we're really pleased that you're gonna be getting some information about the Summer Youth Employment Program, which not only employs youths during the summer, but it gives them a way to understand a professional atmosphere for work. It starts them on a financial planning situation, and it keeps them engaged in uh, their life experience begins with an internship. So without further ado, because we have a very packed house today, we're, we're getting a lot of participants. I'm going to wait a couple of more minutes. Uh, but in the meantime, we will start introducing our guests that will be speaking and taking your questions. Uh, we will do a short um, presentation and then take all of your questions, which will be in a Q&A box that um, Noel Murray, who is here, as our program coordinator and the master of all Zooms will handle for us. So again, my name is Marisa Redanti. I welcome you all. I'm really glad to see so many people have engaged in this uh, fantastic program. And um, I would also like to introduce our Associate Commissioner of Workforce Development and Educational Initiatives, Aaliyah Jones-Harvey. Aaliyah. Good afternoon. How is everyone doing? Um, <clears throat> thank you so much, Marisa, and uh, the Department of Youth and Community Development for organizing today's webinar. Uh, MOM is committed to building a diverse, equitable, and inclusive workforce for New York City. Initiatives such as the Summer Youth Employment Program and Ladders for Leaders will help us reach our goal by providing a professional work opportunity to our young New Yorkers. The sooner a young person experiences a working environment in a field of interest, the better the chance that they can build a career in that industry. And so this is why we're excited that you're here today to learn more about the Summer Youth Employment Program. And um, thank you for coming. I'll turn it back over to Marisa. Thanks, Noel. I'm sorry. I'm just going to stretch for a few more minutes because we are filling up really quickly. Hello, Darrell. I'm so glad to see you. Can you see anything on the screen? Do you see that, Noel? Darrell Johnson. Is it okay now, Darrell? Anyway, we wanted to, um, to emphasize that not only are you introducing a young person by employing them through this program, which doesn't cost you anything, uh, to a, a work environment, but you're also introducing them to your industry. I know that we have interest from uh, theaters, we have interest from unions and production houses and um, even beauty parlors and hotels. So all those industries are getting uh, uh, allowing a young person to be introduced to that industry, which only helps your industry in the long run. So I am now going to introduce, we are very pleased to have Sarah Whitney with us from the Department of Youth and Community Development, who runs this program. She is the Senior Director of Employer Engagement and Partnerships. Take it away, Sarah. Hi, folks. Thank you so much for having me. I uh, reshared the slides here, so hopefully folks can uh, now see the screen. If you cannot, feel free to drop us a message in the chat, um, but it looks like it's it's fixed on your end. Uh, Marisa, Aliyah, Noel, thank you so much for having us. Again, my name is Sarah Whitney from the New York City Department of Youth and Community Development, and I'm joined by my colleague, Amir Tassin, who is also part of our employer engagement and partnerships here at DYCD. We're excited to share with you a bit about the Summer Youth Employment Program uh, today. For those of you who have participated in the program in the past, we hope that this re-energizes you uh, to commit to once again hiring New York City youth through the program this summer. And for those of you who are new and have not been a part of SYP in the past, we hope you'll join us. 
So today we're just going to talk a little bit about the basics of SYEP if you're not familiar um, and you know why why we hope you'll join us in participating this summer. We'll go through some program details to refresh on what's expected in, in the year and the summer ahead and dive a little bit deeper into work experiences for young people, what typical work experiences look like and what they could look like for you at your company or organization. And then we'll close out by just briefing you quickly on the process and timeline to partner with us and answer your questions. So if you're not familiar, the Summer Youth Employment Program is the nation's largest youth employment program. We connect young people across the city to paid jobs and internships every summer. Uh, in 2022 and again in 2023, we're reaching 100,000 young New Yorkers ages 14 to 24 through this program. If you grew up in New York, you know that SYEP is kind of a rite of passage for New Yorkers. The program actually launched in 1963, so we're celebrating the 60th anniversary anniversary of the program this summer. If you were an SYP participant, I'd love if you drop that in the chat, um, maybe with what your SYP job was, and uh, we'll have something special for you, an announcement at the end. Um, but, you know, the, the value proposition for a young person is pretty clear, right? You're earning a paycheck that you might not otherwise have. You're getting a head start on your career. But for companies and organizations, there's also a huge value add to partnering to host uh, New York City youth through the program. You get to connect with hyperlocal talent. So if you're looking to expand your footprint in certain communities, we work with young people across the city in every single New York City neighborhood who have uh, not only energy and creativity, but true skills that they're learning through their education, through our training programs, or that they're learning on the job. Um, and they really, you know, are helping us to build a workforce that reflects New York City. We want to help young people get a head start on their career tra trajectories so that we can ensure that you know, we do a better job, all of us across industries in, in hiring local uh, residents and ensuring that we're able to provide meaningful, well-paying career opportunities to all uh, New Yorkers in the future. We also have a signature program, almost a capstone experience that I wanted to briefly share with you called Ladders for Leaders. This is a nationally recognized internship program for young people who are high achieving academically and who have some past work experience. This is an opportunity for those companies and organizations who might have uh, advanced professional internships and want to hire young people directly during the summer months, uh, we offer an opportunity to help you with that recruitment. We work with high schools and colleges across the city and young people who are from New York but attending college across the country to support the recruitment pipeline to provide highly qualified candidates who have just the same skills and talents as their peers at top universities across the country, uh, but might not have the network, the personal network to get them in the door at some of these internship programs and through our ladders program, we help to do that. We have a number of partners across a variety of industries that you can see here. We're really grateful to all of you who have partnered with us in the past. I see a few names in the chat that I recognize. Um, in addition to those you see on the screen, we've worked with folks like BronxNet Community Cable Programming, Bronx Theater, Fox 5, the City Parks Foundation, the Classical Theater of, Har of Harlem, the Epic Theater Ensemble, Stone Street Studios. We have been really grateful to have the support of the Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment and many in the industry to host New York City youth through our programs in the past. And we hope that you'll join us if you haven't uh, for this coming summer. And so why is this important to us now? Obviously, we want to provide young people with experiences in a range of industries, but the city's creative economy supports 95,000 jobs, $11 billion in wages, and $34 billion in total economic output uh, for the, uh, according to a recent report from 2022. And specifically in 2022, last summer, more than 10,000 SYEP applicants chose arts, entertainment, broadcasting, or advertising as their top career choice. 
And we want to make sure we can uh, partner those young people who have interest in this industry directly with companies and organizations that can help them meet those, those goals in exploring their careers. Um, in our post SYEP survey, so a survey of all participants who were placed at jobs and internships last summer, 21% of those respondents asked us to provide them with more future experiences in entertainment and sports, and 19% requested media and communications opportunities. Just a few examples uh, of industries that you might all be working in or have networks within, where we're really seeing a lot of young people ask to uh, participate to have career exploration opportunities. And so for those of you who might not be super familiar with the program structure, I wanted to offer a few details. So our 14 and 15 year old uh, young people who are part of SYEP take part in project-based learning experiences. They work with one of our city-funded community-based organizations to go through project-based learning. They're uh, doing workplace readiness. They're doing financial literacy. They're really learning about what the workplace will be like for them when they turn 16. And our 16 to 24 year olds are placed with employer partners or as we refer to them, work sites, uh, hopefully all of you this summer, based on their age, their skills, and their interests, right? They're paid $15 an hour directly through the city of New York, so there's no cost to employers, and they work for up to 25 hours per week for six weeks over the summer. Employers have an op uh, the option to have the young people start on July 5th or July 10th, and they work for those six weeks following. We offer in-person, remote, or hybrid roles. So that's really up to the employer themselves what works best. And all we ask of you, in addition to providing a job opportunity that the young people can learn while directly contributing to the work of your organization, is that you provide supportive supervision. We ask for every 12 participants that a company or organization hires through SYEP, you provide at least one supervisor. But we don't discriminate. We can have you host uh, just as few as one intern over the summer or as many as you uh, think that you have appropriate and impactful roles for. And as I mentioned, there's been a number of companies in the industry uh, that have hired through SYAP in the past. This is just a very uh, brief list to give you an idea of some past work site, work site experiences that young people have had. We want to offer young people with a range of opportunities. So if you might have office-based work for a young person this summer, we'd love for you to hire through SYP. If you might have field work, uh, community-based work that you're doing across the city that you want young people to support with, we'd love for you to hire. If you have a project in mind that you or your colleagues have wanted to take on for the past few years and you just haven't had the time and it would be perfect for a young person with energy, with creativity and a willingness to learn, we'd love for you to think of SYP as a way to finally get that project done. Uh, and then if you wanna offer opportunities to shadow various uh, members of your organization who do different work, that's a great way for young people to learn as well. We can provide you all with a internship design kit to help think through what an internship or job experience would look like with your organization because the opportunities really are endless. And then briefly, I'll share a new initiative that we're launching this year. Mayor Adams actually launched what we're calling SYAP Pride at this year's State of the City event back in February. This is a new initiative specifically uh, open to young people who want to find first job experiences that are supportive of young people in the LGBTQ plus community. We're gonna be providing not only welcoming and inclusive workplaces for the young people to be hosted at this summer, but we're also gonna be providing career exploration events with local leaders and organizations. We're gonna be uh, offering employer training opportunities for young for employers who have a commitment to supporting LGBTQ plus youth but don't necessarily know how to provide uh, a particularly inclusive and welcoming experience. So if your organization is committed to supporting what um, unfortunately oftentimes might not be a great first job experience for a young person in this community, but you want to make sure that they have that powerful welcoming first experience, we'd love for you to reach out to us to host a young person from our uh, SYP Pride initiative. 
And so that brings me to my call to action for you all. How can you support us? We hope that you'll hire New York City youth through SYEP or Ladders for Leaders. We'll share this presentation with uh, everyone through the Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment. And we have links on our next slide to the application. Uh, we hope you'll champion the program within your network. If you know of other organizations, companies that might be interested in this opportunity, we would hope that you share this with them. In the top right-hand corner, you'll see a QR code, which will allow you to download our outreach toolkit to uh, gain access to videos, flyers, graphics that can help you share the opportunity with others. We also welcome you to reach out about hosting a career exploration event. Last summer, we offered about 50 different career exploration opportunities for young people to not only get exposure to the industry that they were working in, but also to have a chance to visit offices in different industries and sectors to do skill building workshops with companies and organizations as part of their summer experience. So we'd welcome um, a conversation about how you might help us to host one of those events. And then the last opportunity is, of course, always to provide in-kind support, whether that's helping us with advertising, promotion, creative services. We try our best here at DYCD, but we also always welcome any support uh, that you all may be able to give in helping us expand the program and continue to provide equitable opportunities to young people across New York City. Our timeline, um, as Marisa and Amir mentioned in the chat here, our worksite application, so that's the form that you'll fill out to commit to hiring uh, youth through SYEP, is due May 26th. A link is here and we'll share it afterwards as well. Uh, we ask that you'll complete this application with information about what the job opportunity or internship is with your company, what the desired schedule is for the young people, how many young people you'd like to host this summer, and any other details that we should know. Maybe you're particularly looking someone for someone with Spanish language skills, or you're particularly hoping to find someone who is studying or hopes to study uh, IT. Whatever that might be, we welcome you to share that with us in the worksite application. In that application, you'll choose a community partner of ours. That community partner will help to match you with participants based on the role that you provide and the needs that you have. Uh, so those community partners serve almost as a liaison between the young people and the employers. So as you can see in May and June, they'll do worksite pre-assessments to meet with you, answer any questions you might have and ensure that the, uh, the job or internship is ready and appropriate for the young people. And then by mid-June, they'll assign you two participants for the summer who can start either July 5th or July 10th. And then lastly, before we close out and answer questions that you might have, as I mentioned in the beginning, we're celebrating the 60th anniversary of SYEP this summer. And I can imagine, I saw a few things go by in the chat, I can imagine that many of you have an SYEP story to share with us, whether you were a participant when you were young, whether you were, uh, you've hosted young people in the past who you then ended up hiring with your company or organization. We would love to hear your story. And we're collecting stories online at the link that you can see on your screen. We're excited to celebrate those stories in the spring and over the summer so that we can recognize the impact that this program has had uh, for the lives of so many New Yorkers. So. We'll share this afterwards and drop it in the chat. We really hope you'll share your story with us so that we can feature you throughout the summer. And so with that, I'll take a break, a pause. I think Noel will help me to get some questions from folks that Amir and I can answer for you. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, that's fantastic, Sarah. Um, there's a couple questions in the chat already. So if everyone could not put any more questions in the chat so we can get these few done and then we'll start using the Q&A that Noel has set up. Um, I believe there was a question about how can, excuse me, how can immigrant youth apply for STEP? That's why EP, sorry. 
So for any uh, young person ages 14 to 24 that resides in New York City and has work authorization, uh, they're welcome to uh, apply through the program, um, the, the application online. So that includes, for example, if a young person um, is here uh, with an asylum case and has been issued with a social security number and is able to apply for work, they're welcome to apply uh, with that online. Uh, we also have a small program for young people who have barriers to applying to SYEP. And I'll share, we, you see our contact information here. Uh, if you want to reach out to me directly, we can share some more information about our Pathways program that provides an opportunity for uh, young people with barriers to applying to SYEP and how they can get involved. And how can schools apply for their students or are schools allowed to apply for their students? It's a great question. Schools can definitely help their students apply. We can share, uh, I think Marisa already has it, but we can share a toolkit for participants as well. Our deadline is coming up on Friday for young people to apply. Um, and so schools can help their young their students apply. They'll need to, you know, work with the student to make sure they have all of the students' information that's required for the application. Um, oh, and I see to host students. Stu uh, schools can also host students as a work site if schools have uh, job opportunities, internship opportunities in the schools. We had about, I believe, 4,000 young people working uh, in DOE schools or with DOE offices last summer. So that's definitely an opportunity as well. Okay, I'm going to go to the Q&A box now. Um, I've hired terrific interns through Ladders for Leaders several times before. Is Ladders for Leaders the same as SYEP? That's a great question. Uh, Ladders for Leaders is under the umbrella of SYEP. So we look at it almost as a capstone experience. For, a, for SYEP, it's often a young person's first ever job. So you're looking to hire a young person who doesn't have past experience, who's really uh, looking for that mentorship, that learning opportunity, and a job that someone without past experience would be able to do. For ladders, the young people are required to have past work experience, as well as a 3.0 GPA. So the structure of the program is the same. The young people just have a little bit more past experience. The only difference is SYEP is only 25 hours per week. But if you're a company or organization that has an existing internship program, you want to hire young people directly, you do have the opportunity through Ladders to hire a young person for more of a full-time role, more than six weeks paid directly by your organization. So we, the short answer is it's it's under the umbrella of SYP. Are we allowed to interview the prospective candidates? For Ladders for Leaders, absolutely. All of the candidates go through interviews. For SYP, because of the scale of the program, we match the young people into their job opportunity based on their skills, their background, their interests. So there's not a formal interview process, but you'll receive a roster of all of the participants with a little bit about them. And you'll also have an opportunity with many um, of our community partners to attend like a job fair to be able to meet the young people in advance of the program starting. I actually have a question. At some point in the description, it said could be out of work or out of school. So that's SYEP, correct? Mm -hmm. SYEP is open to young people 14 to 24, regardless of their school status. How do students apply? To be interns, anonymous attendee? You're talking about how do students apply to be um, uh, interns? Amir, do you want to take that one? Well, yes, students can apply through um, the SYP application um, facing, for facing participants. I can put that, put that down in the link in the chat box. Joelle Blackstock, do you choose, oops, do you choose the students that you host or does SYEP choose? Oh, that's the same question as do you interview? Yes, yeah, so we match the participants based on the information that you provide us. 
uh, in your application. So you'll want to be as specific as possible in your application of the skills and the interests that you're hoping young people will have so that we can make that best match. Is it possible to provide a PDF of the worksite application? I would like to pull together materials required in advance. Of course. Yes, we can send that to Marisa. And if you also want to send us your contact information through the chat here, we can send that to you as well. Okay. If you're a nonprofit that creates programming from young people and become a host site, can you hire the students you already work with? Hmm. That's a good question. So the young people will have to be enrolled in SYEP and then we can help to make that match. So if you have young people who are uh, apply to SYEP and are enrolled, then we can definitely help to have them work with you over the summer. Uh, because of the scale of the program, the uh, opportunities are not currently guaranteed to young people. But after the the point of enrollment, um, we can definitely help to connect you with back with those youth. For new employers participating in this initiative, are companies required to sign any agreements? Great question. Yes, in the online application, you'll sign a worksite assurances uh, form uh, electronically. This uh, includes many of the details that we talked about today. So for example, the maximum number of hours that the young person can work, understanding that anything above and beyond those hours won't be paid directly by the city, uh, ensuring that you know, you are providing the uh, required ratio of supervisors to participants. So we can share uh, a copy of that as well, but that's within the uh, worksite application, the site assurances form. We have several summer camps happening. Is there a way to train all of our SYEP members before the program's launch to conduct professional development and training? That's a great question. So uh, SYEP participants go through about eight hours of onboarding with community partners prior to the start of the program. So that includes workplace readiness, as well as a mandatory sexual harassment training. Um, you're welcome to speak with your community partner when you complete the application about what you're hoping young people uh, can be oriented to prior to the start of the job. It's not required, right? So the young people won't be paid by SYEP uh, for anything prior to July 5th. Um, but if you're interested in, you know, offering an opportunity for them to get to know your program prior, or uh, if you wanted to provide them with a paid orientation prior to the start of the program directly, that's also fine with us. Uh, this next question is something uh, I've heard one other time. Uh, we've applied in the past and not received any interns. We are a stage in Brooklyn doing music videos, TV shows, fashion photography, et cetera, and our women-owned and operated business. Any tips on how best to present ourselves so that we get someone from the program this year? Thanks. Now you know me. So uh, reach out to me when you've applied this year so that I can support. Um, I would say my tip would be, you know, when you're submitting your application, think about what makes your opportunity exciting for a young person. So while we'd love to just have a job ready person who has all these skills and qualifications and is ready to go and basically is an entry level employee to have their support over the summer, that's not exactly what this program is, right? So if you can think about how your summer experience will not only benefit your organization, but will also benefit the young people and include that in your application, I think that will help. Um, but also please feel free to reach out to us so we can support you with that. Um, I have a question also, Sarah, are there any hours that are, I mean, are the uh, interns allowed to work into the evening? It's, I'm seeing it's, it's music videos and things like that. Is there any restriction on, on the hours of the day that, that interns can work? Yeah, as long as you're following local labor laws, which we can provide um, a copy of, what I might recommend for something like that is looking to hire SYP participants over the age of 18, which gives a little bit more flexibility because off the top of my head, I believe for those under 18, they uh, can't work past 
10 p.m., I want to say, uh, or before 6 a.m. So we just want to think about what type of young person would be best suited for the opportunity and also ensure that they're safe, right, during their summer experience. Do you provide MetroCard or transportation stipend for the interns? Last summer, we were able to, for the first time, provide Metro cards to all SYEP participants. And while that, um, that benefit is not finalized yet for the summer ahead, we're hopeful that we'll be able to do that again in the future. For remote work, should companies be expected to set up a virtual workstation to log into, or will students have a workable station of their own? Asking as an animation company doing 3D animation using Blender and open source software. Hmm, interesting question. That's a very good question. Uh, typically, and the official answer is that we'd ask the employer to provide any uh, equipment or software that the young people would require for the job. However, if you're a small organization and that might be a barrier to be able to host a young person and you're using open source software, our community partners that work with the young people might be able to help through, for example, the DOE, uh, ensure that you're matched with a young person that has a laptop, you know, if the software is open source, if I'm understanding correctly, and wouldn't require subscriptions. So definitely make note of that in your application. Is there a financial obligation to employers for participating in the program? I know the answer to this one. No, there is not. <laughs> Correct. How is workers comp handled for on site? Great question. So uh, because the city of New York is the employer of record, right? So a young person's W-2 will come through, through the city. Uh, they're covered under workers comp through the city. Um, the, that will cover them for anything listed in your uh, worksite application. So that's why it's important to include all of the details, right? The location where they'll be working, who their supervisor will be, what their hours will be. And then they're covered under the city's workers comp. Jennifer Maldowney, uh, is there, what are the dates of the internship or are they flexible? Uh, no, no reason to apologize. Uh, by the way, we're going to have this, uh, this whole set available um, to you if you want to watch it yourself. Amir, do you want to answer that question? Yes, so the SYP starts either July 5th or July 10th. And then it ends either um, August 12 or August 19, depending on the cohort. However, if you do have an existing um, internship that you would like, uh, in, existing internship um, program within your own organization, and you, which will be paid through you, um, you have the opportunity, you have the chance to make your own um, schedule through your discretion. Is there any reporting required for SYEP? I'm not sure what that means. I'll take a stab and then if we don't answer your question, feel free to put it back in the chat. So in terms of like paperwork uh, for the program, so you'll fill out your application. Uh, the community partner that works with the young people will do a pre-assessment of your site to ensure safety and readiness for the start of the program. Uh, and they'll also do assessments during the program. So they'll make sure that things are going well, they'll be able to support you. Uh, that's paperwork that they fill out, you don't have to fill it out. What we ask of you is that you sign your participants' timesheets each week to ensure that they get paid. So that can be digitally or paper timesheets, whatever your preference. Uh, and then we do ask you to evaluate the young people at the end of the internship to ensure that they have you know, constructive feedback um, going forward in their career journeys. Here's another question I get frequently. How have you handled in the past if an intern is not working out due to performance related issues? Are we obligated to keep the intern for the entire six weeks? You are not obligated. Uh, we want to work with you to address any issues. So if there's any incidents, uh, at your work site, we'd ask that you report it right away to your community partner. You'll have an open line of communication to your contact. 
uh, for SYEP, and they will work with you to determine the best course of action. So it's not required that the young person continues throughout the whole summer if there are insurmountable issues. This is a youth development program, so this is why we have community partners who are experts in youth development to help work through those issues and see if they can be resolved. But you wouldn't be required to, you know, continue on if there was a, a specific barrier that you were facing. Okay, sorry, I was trying. Oh, no open questions, really? We have I answered every single, oh, here we go. Oh, uh, we have one in the chat, yes. Uh, we have one in the chat and uh, I don't see it in the chat. Oh, how do, do we how do we accommodate scholars who have summer school? Yeah, that's a really, really good question. So, uh, and someone asked a little bit about this earlier, within the dates of the program, you have flexibility to create their hourly schedule based on what works for you. And also you can, you know, help to accommodate young person, a young person's schedule as well. Uh, so if you do have young people who are in summer school, you still want to host them for the program. Um, you can create a schedule that could work around uh, their academic needs, for example. Um, you are The program is up to 25 hours per week, but if you or if a young person uh, can't commit to that full, out, the full opportunity, we offer the opportunity to host young people for as few as 75 hours over the six weeks. And we on our end supplement the remaining time with uh, professional and technical development online for the young people. So if you're sitting here thinking, gosh, I would love to do this, but I really can't commit to 25 hours per week. I can only do 15. We'd still love to work with you and we'd supplement the students remaining hours to ensure that they receive their full um, uh, opportunity over the summer. That's really great. Because someone also was asking me the other day about the same thing and I really wasn't sure. Um, any other questions? I don't, I don't see any. Do you, Noel? Uh, there is one question in the Q&A. And uh, just so you, uh, everybody knows, you are totally free to continue asking questions. But if there are none more, you know, there are none more. We just answered the one about having not, not enough t time per week. Oh, OK. Sorry, then. I got my stuff there then. Well, I'd also like to reiterate what Sarah said about passing this on to friends, uh, because it's really um, a fantastic program for both industry and the young people and for the economy of New York, because if we build a good workforce and the uh, best place to start building something is from the ground up and the younger, the better. So uh, please pass it on. Hi, Jennifer. Thank you very much. Um, is uh, is it best to give them a project that we can begin and finish with us, meaning that intern? That's a question. Uh, you know, that's a good question. I think what's most important is that the young people can see the value that they're contributing contributing to the organization. So something where they're starting and finishing a project is great, right? They can see the full scope, uh, but oftentimes that's not realistic. Here at DYCD, personally, for our interns, we might have projects that aren't finished, but we still ask all of our interns to present to a group of our colleagues at the end of the summer of what they've worked on and what their recommendations are for the future. So that even if it's not a closed loop project that there is fully complete at the end of the summer, they can at least show what they've worked on and see how it's contributed to the organization. Oh, I'm sorry. I put in the application for the youth. Uh, uh, Amir, could you put in the application link, not the PDF, in the chat? Yes, I will. Hey. Yeah, I'll put the one for work sites and for youth in the chat. Okay, I did the one for youth already. Okay. Grace, there'll be it'll be a second. You'll get the link to the application. Another question: Curious for a first-time participant, what types of internship opportunities are there in more corporate settings? We have a number of opportunities every year in corporate settings. Uh, I'll give you two examples. So uh, one is uh, through a number of real estate companies here in New York uh, who 
hire young people directly. Uh, they have um, existing internship programs that are highly competitive, full-time, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, recruiting participants like at the top of their class at Ivy League universities, but they're committed to also ensuring that they're hiring local New York City residents through the program. So uh, these types of companies and, and in real estate, we happen to have a number of uh, commitments from the industry, they uh, use us as a recruitment pipeline. We help to sort through uh, pre-approved, pre-trained young people in our program, uh, and we help prepare them for high-level internships so that they can compete amongst those top university students across the country and sometimes across the world. Uh, they're working in office settings, um, both uh, in person as well as some remote opportunities for corporate uh, companies that haven't yet come back to the office full time. Another example is uh, we currently uh, place interns through uh, Paramount Global. They're committed to a number of youth facing youth employment programs across the city, and we're very lucky to work with them to be able to offer positions um, in a number of their uh, departments every summer where they hire young people to work in their different um, uh, business units, right? Some people working with um, CBS research last summer, others working in like IT and data analytics, others working in more uh, media focused um, business units. I just wanted to bring it to your attention to the attendees that have been asking. Now in the chat, if you look over, you'll see the application for youth, which is those who want to be interns, and also the application for a work site or an employer, which all of you are, uh, application. They're both in the chat right now. I see no other questions. Anybody else? Oh, it is 25 hours a week the max or can the intern do 35 hours one week and then 15 the next, basically juggling hours when needed? Uh, we want the young people to work a maximum of 25 hours in the week. Um, and we do understand that they might, you know, you might have last minute needs that come up and you need to adjust their schedules. Uh, but we hope that their maximum for the week would be 25 hours. If you wanted to hire them for longer, you're welcome to hire them directly and we can help with the recruitment. I would like to offer free summer breakfast and a safe haven, heaven, haven, I think they mean for kids who don't have anywhere to go. Also a place for IGBTQ. I think um, that's LGBTQ, uh, to have a meetup space for them to be their self and help. Others feel comfortable coming out. I have an open space that fits 40 people. Just want to know if this will be a good fit. Sarah? Sure, I, I don't know your name, but um, we'd love to talk to you more about that. Uh, you can definitely feel free to reach out to us. For SYP in particular, we want this to be a job or internship opportunity. So if this opportunity might include, you know, tasks and roles where they can contribute back to your organization, great. If not, and it's a fit for another one of DYCD's funded programs, which it sounds like it might be, we're happy to connect you. DYCD offers not only youth workforce development initiatives, but after school programs, summer camps, and a range of services for New Yorkers uh, across the city. One last question. You can ask as many as you want. Um, I understand the age requirement. Can you clarify if the young people are required to be actively in high school or college? No, there's no school requirement as long as they are within the age range. Well, while folks think if, if they have any last questions, I'll say that it's often a great opportunity if you might be looking to hire uh, for your organization in the fall uh, to hire a young person who's not in high school or college who might be looking for a full-time job opportunity because SYEP is basically a free uh, you know, six week job interview, right? You can uh, see what they're like in the role, in a similar role with the opportunity to have them continue on with you permanently, if it makes sense. 
Can the employer request a college age intern? Yes, you can request whatever you'd like in your application and our, our community partners will do their best to match you with someone that meets what you're looking for. Anyone else? I think this was a very interesting webinar with all of the great questions. Um, if there are no other questions going once, going twice, we will bid you all adieu and take advantage of the wonderful uh, weather outside. Remember, as you see on this slide, there are two uh, uh, places where you can reach out to Sarah and to Amir. Please take the time to copy that down. Also, we'll be sending out a follow-up email with um, information and links and whatnot. So thank you so much and pass the word to all your friends about what a great, great um, job opportunity and intern opportunity this is. And thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Amir. Thank you, Aaliyah. And of course, thank you, Noel. Bye, everybody.